Hey everyone, uh, today I was looking at my DVDs and I was thinking I really want to do a just talk about Powerpuff Girls. I'm a big fan, and uh, there's been talk lately of uh, they're going to be doing a live action show with influence from Riverdale. That'll be strange if that comes out. Uh, I have some issues with the description they gave that the girls are adults now and they uh, resent that they never had a childhood, which is kind of missing uh, the original tone of the show. Or the, They definitely had childhoods. Like, yeah, they were superheroes, but they were happy. The show was happy. And it's just kind of odd. Anyway, here's the weird thing. I'm coming at it, I'm coming at Powerpuff Girls uh, with the perspective of an adult. I didn't really see it that much as a kid. I didn't have cable. We didn't have Cartoon Network. Uh, I'd only see it if we were at a friend's house or a relative's house. Once in a while, I saw some of the episodes on tapes. Like, I remember uh, getting Scooby-Doo tapes from the video store, and there'd be bonus episodes of Powerpuff Girls on there. But, yeah, it just... And a few episodes, I remember they would come on, like, really early in the morning for some reason on... Uh, CBS, I think. I don't remember. But I saw a few episodes there. I think it was a uh, Supper Hero with the guy who goes crazy and thinks he's a super villain. Or was that Supper Villain? I can't remember the name of the episode. But anyway, uh, I really didn't see it that much when I was a kid or a teenager. I didn't see all of it until I was an adult. Let's see. I had been watching uh, some of Mysterious Mr. Enter's videos. I'm a big fan of his, and he did some videos about Powerpuff Girls, and it was interesting to me that even the episodes that he didn't like, that he had problems with, that were, you know, part of his atrocities videos, I really liked those. So I figured, you know what, maybe I should give Powerpuff Girls a look, see if it's any good. And at a yard sale, I happened to cross uh, Powerpuff Girls the movie. And I was like, eh, well, like, usually the movie of a series is the weakest part. Like, I'm thinking of uh, the Doug movie. I like the Doug movie, but when you compare it to the show itself, either Nickelodeon or Disney, the movie doesn't really have a whole lot that the show had. Um, I'm trying to think what other, like, movies that series had. Like, a lot of... Recess, that's a good one. Uh, Recess, the series, awesome. Movie, meh. <laughs> oh, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Series, great. Um... The movie, the one with the actual ponies in it, is just kind of, nah. Equestria Girls is also, nah. and Rainbow Rocks is cool, and the rest are just kind of, nah. Anyway, so Powerpuff Girls, I got the movie, I wasn't expecting much, but it became one of my favorite movies ever. Uh, it starts off with a Big Lebowski reference, of all things, that's really cool. Because I love Big Lebowski, another one of my favorite movies. Uh, I'm saying, uh, a lot, I think. Like, I, I gotta try and work on that. <laughs> anyway... The movie was really cool, and I really liked it, so after seeing this, I had to check out the series. So I found myself uh, the box set. Every season, every almost every episode, there's one not there, but I'll get to that later. And Let's see. So anyway, when I got this, since I had never really seen much of it except for clips and a stray episode here or there, I decided to start from the beginning. And then just watch them all in order and just in marathon. And they were great. And, like, even the later seasons, people complain about the later seasons, but even those had their strong moments and really strong episodes. The one odd thing, the end of the series, it just kind of happened. There was no big finale, no big conclusion. It didn't end with a movie. It just ended. However, they did come back for reunion specials. There was uh, the Pop of Girls Forever, I think it was called, the 10th anniversary, where they came back, and that, that kind of did feel like a good conclusion episode. It was really fast-paced and goofy, but it was fun. And uh, let's see, then there was another special they did, Dance Pants, which uh, isn't on DVD in the U.S. or in the U.K., from what I can tell, so I had to import this one from Australia. Anyway, it's weird because it's only like a like, 20-some minutes long. So, it's barely, like, a little bit over the length of a normal episode. So I was wondering, why would they give it its own DVD? Well, there's bonus episodes of the series. Just, I don't know, I guess, 
I don't know, they had to put something on there to fill up space. I would have preferred, like, having the other specials. Like, I think there was a couple of Christmas specials they did. Or if there were uh, the commercials from Cartoon Network. That was something. I had a couple of tapes that I found at a yard sale of uh, stuff taped off of Cartoon Network. And there were some of the Cartoon Network, like, music videos. Uh, what was the name of that one? There was the giant signal in the sky and uh, Go Monkey Go and the Shonen Knife uh, I'm a Supergirl Buttercup song. <laughs> oh, and that's something. I actually have one of the Powerpuff Girls CDs, Heroes and Villains, because of that Shonen Knife song. So that was that was cool. Anyway, I was a big Powerpuff Girl fan as an adult. I watched the show, I became a fan, and so I wanted to see as much as there was. I found that special, and then I found out there was the anime, Powerpuff Girls Z, which I was able to find a copy of on eBay. Unfortunately, it's not every episode. I don't know why. It's a bootleg. Why couldn't they just copy the last couple episodes? I have no idea. But I was able to find DVD-Rs from somebody of the rest of the series in Japanese with subtitles. I didn't really like Z that much. <laughs> um, it was okay. It was, like, as a, like, one of those uh, pretty cure-type magical girl shows, it's fine. Not really what I'm into or interested in. I didn't really like Blossom in the show or uh, Bubbles. I liked Buttercup the best, Kaoru. She's the only one whose name I can remember. That was a weird thing with the anime. They gave the girls names outside of uh, Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup. Oh, and the other weird thing, I remember hearing that it was a sequel series. It was all about... Uh, the original girls were made with Chemical X, and Professor Utonium's son is experimenting with uh, Chemical Z. So I kept thinking this was a sequel series, but no, it's a complete reinterpretation of the series. Everyone from the normal show is redone in anime. Even the mayor, it's so bizarre to see the mayor like as a person and not just a little short guy. <laughs> but anyway, so I was trying to find just any Powerpuff Girls stuff that I could find at all. And so, let's see, I looked into books, and I found there was a bunch of, like, storybooks. Which makes sense, it's a kid's show, so there's gonna be little kid books. And they're fine. They're not anything too special. My favorite, though, was, uh, let's see, Teeth Thief. Because it has that scene, or I think it has that scene where... Hmm. Oh, nope, I guess they cut it out. The scene where Buttercup's trying to smash her teeth out with a hammer. That scene is in the comic book, though, which I'll get to. <laughs> they do keep uh, some funny scenes, though, like Buttercup just going around beating up the bad guys for their teeth. That's awesome. Anyway, uh, let's see. Oh, might as well talk about the comics. Now, IDW put out these uh, nice little like archive sets of the comics that uh, DC originally published back in the day. Oh, and actually, that's one of the places I originally uh, knew something about Power Powerpuff Girls, because I would I read a lot of comics as a kid. The grocery store had a bunch of comics, so I'd be reading those, and there was one that's actually in one of these UK annuals up there where they're uh, shoveling snow out of the driveway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The comics are really good. Sometimes they'll adapt episodes of the show into the comic, and other times they'll be completely original stories. And then there were some later comics that were like big team-up crossovers with a whole bunch of Cartoon Network characters. Let's see, and then I think there was another one. There it is. There was like an original graphic novel for Powerpuff Girls. Second Chances. Oh yeah, this one was all about uh, the villains trying to become good guys or something. I haven't read the comics in a while. Let's see. Oh, and then I have this book. The Powerpuff Girls Perfect Guide. Now this was a Japanese book that came out around the time of the movie when that came out in Japan, I think. There's a fold-out poster there of a bunch of the characters. That's really cool. And then, let's see, the beginning's a little summary of the movie. Then we get, let's see, an interview with Craig McCracken there. And it's funny, there's a few bits in English. I can uh, read Monty Python in there, I have no idea 
what he was talking about when they mentioned Monty Python. Weird. Anyway, then there's, like, character profiles. And then there's a lot of character information. I wish we had a book like this in the U.S., because this is really good. It's really thorough. And then there's, like, a merchandise catalog in the back showing all the different Powerpuff Girls merchandise. And for whatever reason, Japan gets the best stuff. <laughs> So anyway, let's see, there's all my Powerpuff Girls stuff. I have a few more things, there's a couple of figures lying around, there's some of the video games. Uh, yeah, so I guess the next thing to talk about is when I was getting into the show as an adult, right around, like right after I'd finished watching it and I was really into the show, I heard of they were making a new Powerpuff Girls show. So I was really excited for that. Then it came out. I wasn't impressed with it. I didn't like it. Uh, let's see, the comic. I have one of the comics. <laughs> now, the weird thing with the comic and the show, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the reboot show. The designs were tweaked, and not in a good way. A lot of the characters, they just don't look right. The background characters look like they're from a completely different show. Uh, the d overall design, I really didn't like, and I didn't like them recasting ra at random. The girls got changed, uh, some other characters got changed, and then other characters didn't. It didn't make any sense. There was no logic to who was changed and who was kept the same. The same with the designs. Some people got uh, weirder redesigns than others. And I also just didn't like the plots. <laughs> and it's really difficult to watch any of it now, knowing what's going on behind the scenes with it. I won't get into that, it's really bad. <laughs> oh, I there was one I kind of liked, it was the, uh, there was one where they were going to a concert, I think, I can barely remember anything about it. I remember liking that one okay, but, like, my biggest problem is that most of the time it forgets it's supposed to be a superhero comedy. Most of the time, it just seems like it's trying to be a, like a, kids going to school comedy and it's just not funny there's so much stuff in the show that's like oh yeah that show had non-humor in it and i really don't like non-humor like especially when it's just i don't get it like even normal humor i have trouble understanding sometimes like i'll watch a sitcom or something and i'll be sitting there wondering i don't get it what's the context of how what the why like, I try to watch Big Bang Theory a few times because people are like, well, you're a nerd, you'd love it because it's all about nerd culture. I'm like, oh, cool, and I watch it, and I'm like, well, I don't get it. Why is this? Why is that? And they're like, well, dude, shut your brain off. No, it's nerd culture. You can't shut your brain off in nerd culture. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway, the comic book, I figured, well, Teen Titans Go, I like the comic better than the show, so maybe this will be the same way. And they even got Derek Charm back to do the artwork. He was one of my favorite artists on the original Powerpuff Girls. So I was really surprised when the artwork here... I didn't like it. But then I realized... It wasn't that Derek Charm was really good at drawing the Powerpuff Girls. is that he's really good at emulating the Powerpuff Girls in whatever incarnation they're in. So the original comics looked great because they were those designs. This one looks kind of off because it's going from the 2016 show's design. But anyway, I read the comic, and it's okay. It's still got some bits of bizarre non-humor that I don't get. There's uh, the band Taco Cat, who did the new show's theme, pops up just out of nowhere and does nothing. Then there's that unicorn guy who's just there for some reason. Like, the talking dog in the original series, like, yeah, he was weird. There, What is he doing there? But he was kind of the exception, and that unicorn guy, he doesn't really get treated the same. Eh, anyway, just weird. <laughs> yep. There's my thoughts on Powerpuff Girls. Guess I'll end it here. I love Powerpuff Girls, and uh, that's, that's that. See ya.